it really is no secret that the strain on leaders has reached a critical tipping point. Across this era of crisis, you know, they've been under the microscope and they've been often blamed for poor outcomes even as they've taken on more responsibilities and expectations of leading in remote and hybrid environments, of creating inclusion, of filling in the gaps of work as they continue to bring up and train a record number of new employees. We have understandably relied a lot on our leaders in these times of crisis, but few of organizations have asked them how they're holding up. In fact, Gartner reports that only 14% of companies have deliberately attempted to ease their leaders' burdens. So we've really swung the pendulum in the direction of employees, employee engagement, employee retention, and we've forgotten that leaders are actually employees too. And for the first time, they are the ones that are dealing and experiencing the highest levels of stress and burnout. In fact, 43% say that work is interfering with their ability to be happy in other areas of their lives just like Pauline on her computer, unable to engage with her family at home. And this is really critical because if we lose our leaders, we really lose that ability to create those workplace cultures where our people can thrive and do their very best work and ultimately stay. This is especially the case with mid-level managers who feel a strong sense of loyalty to the organization as well as the people that they oversee. And when those two needs conflict. They really feel it more. You can see here on this chart that appreciation scores are less than that of individual contributors, but the big one here is exclusion. It's almost double that of individual contributors and burnout is not far behind. And the ramifications of these trends are extra troubling because not only does the lack of appreciation, exclusion, the burnout manifest in feelings of exhaustion, but also feelings of cynicism and futility that despite all of our best efforts, nothing is going to change. So why should I keep trying? As well as feelings of avoidance and absenteeism, which as we know, cost organizations billions of dollars annually in productivity losses. So the fallout from these demands and these conflicts can really send our organizations into a tailspin and ultimately prolong the challenges we've all been hoping to move past so we can create better health, economic, and social futures for ourselves. I really like what my boss, our vice president of the Institute says. He says, leaders are a vital part of the overall organizational community. They help build and shape culture. They create a sense of belonging, connection, and purpose for their people. And leaders need to feel the same from their organizations. Now is the time for their work community to step up and help them thrive. Because when leaders thrive, their employees, teams, and the entire organization thrives as well. So let's discuss some th specific strategies to help fortify our wary leaders. The first one I want to bring to your attention is championing a culture of modern leadership. What do I mean by that? Well, a couple of years before the pandemic struck, we introduced this concept of modern leaders who reject the traditional leadership model of commanding and controlling the work and instead really focus their efforts on coaching, developing and empowering their people to do their very best. However, in these times of uncertainty, employees have reported that many leaders have fallen into those old habits of directing and micromanaging the work rather than mentoring their people they're putting their people on the defensive by continually evaluating rather than developing their skills and interests. And they're inhibiting progress by withholding information rather than trusting their teams with transparency. To avoid burnout and to really prioritize well being, our leaders need to be able to make the critical transition from doers of the work to influencers of the work who find ways in the context of that everyday employee experience to champion their people and to put them in the best possible position to succeed. The good news is we're starting to see a shift. We found that 81% of modern leaders work in organizations where all employees view themselves as leaders. So clearly those companies that are moving more quickly in this direction are in the process of making that available to everyone, of democratizing, so to speak, that leadership. They're not trying to limit leadership or put everything on the backs of existing leaders, but they're emphasizing these leadership principles across the entire organization. 
And more and more companies are adopting that inclusive approach to leadership development, one that is available to everyone based on the expectation that every single employee, whether or not they actually manage somebody, they view themselves as a leader. And I think that's what we're after at the end of the day. We're trying to get our employees to step up, to share in the leadership load, and to really think more deliberately about how they can influence the results and the outcomes and the culture of the organization.